Ladies and gentlemen, I come to you today with some big news. Ogre Pond is Ogre Gone, at least the Hearth Flame Mask one. This thing has been banned from OU because it is way too damn strong. Today we're gonna dive into a little bit of Ogre Pond action. I was able to use this thing before it got banned. This is a match that happened a few days ago, and uh, let's get into it. So we got a little bit of an interesting lead matchup here. My opponent is gonna lead off with Landorus, and I decide to lead off with the Great Tusk. I am basically new school Landorus, and I am your father now. However, this thing does get the Intimidate, which is annoying, and I imagine we're probably just gonna wanna set up our own Stealth Rock. Uh, Great Tusk does have a little bit of the upper hand here in that I am able to actually uh, Rapid Spin as well, but Turns out this thing is going to end up going for the Grass Knot, which 10 out of 10 did not expect, as I just kind of set up my Stealth Rock thinking, okay, I can't really stay in here and take another Grass Knot, and I don't really have a whole lot on my team that wants to hard switch into Landorus. Uh, I preferred when this thing was deep in the Hell Pits where it belonged before Pokemon Home came out, but we got to work around this dude and his crazy Hammerhead haircut. So, I decided to switch into my Lotic. I know that he's likely just going to go for another Grass Knot, but I am specially defensive, then I can kind of force this thing out with and Ice Beam. So, I do come in, I take that Grass Knot relatively nicely, and my Scaly Serpentine Ass is actually pretty well positioned in the matchup here. They also don't have a whole lot that wants to switch into my Lotic, especially since Scald is back now, you can literally just kind of get burns on stuff. So, I decide to go for a Dragon Tail, thinking they're definitely going to uh, get a little bit of a pivot here. I can stir the pot a bit and try to, you know, see what happens. Uh, so, they do end up going for the U-turn there. And they actually end up bringing in the Dragonite, who does get its multi-scale broken, so this thing is going to be a whole lot easier to deal with. Plus, I just kind of smack him and say, yeah, no, not for me. I give him the Dragon Tail and just decide to see what else comes out. So, Dragonite being down to like half makes this thing extremely manageable for later on. And what ends up getting dragged back in is the Landorus again. So, I'll tell you what is unfortunate. I'm actually using the wrong ability Milotic. I'm actually Marvel Scale. I should be competitive. In a situation like this, this thing comes in, it does get the Intimidate, but then that would boost my special attack, and then basically profit. However, that does not happen, but honestly, I'm still fine with this matchup because I know that I can kind of outlive an Earthquake, and uh, an Ice Beam at this point should be able to be able to just kind of catch this thing, unless they want to switch. But they end up going for the Stealth Rock here, I just want to prioritize getting up those hazards, as Landorus is kind of in a bad spot here. So, doesn't really have anything to switch into, I go for that Ice Beam, does take care of Lando. And his team just really does not have a whole lot of options in terms of switching into Milotic. He does have the Rillaboom, but that thing can't really come in on an Ice Beam. It can now come in on the Empty Battlefield, as I'm sitting well above half here. So I do kind of want to conserve the Milotic, as they do end up bringing in uh, Grass Monkey. So Rillaboom comes in. This thing did get access to Grassy Glide once again. It was actually nerfed, I think down to, what, like 55 base power? Um, it does get that priority still though, and at this point I kind of just died to a drum beating, so... I just what I do. I decide to switch into the Nine Tails. Listen, I have a team that's basically set to get Ogre Pond Hearth Flame to succeed, and that comes in the form of setting up some Sun just to boost some speed. So uh, I have a pretty easy switch in here with the Nine Tails. It's going to activate my Drought with the Heat Rock. It's going to be sunny as hell out here for a little while. Help Granny brought her sunscreen in the back, and uh, we get that Drought, which is super nice. So uh, Really Boom doesn't act actually going for the knockoff instead. It does get rid of that Heat Rock, but. Uh, it was there active for when the drought went up, so I do have that for eight turns. Uh, anyway, we got an interesting matchup here, and you know that my nine tail has balls of steel. This thing is basically here to hit or miss. So I'm thinking either I go for a fire blast or he switches and something takes the fire blast. But instead, what I decide to do is go for the hypnosis because, like I said, we go for those low accuracy moves. It actually ends up working out. This thing stays in, uh, and now it gets put to sleep. So. That is pretty damn amazing, and uh, it actually looked like Ninetales' tongue is out over there, but that's just someone's hand. Just thought that was a, a, a fun note. <laughs> um, uh, but I do have uh, a little bit of recovery from the Grassy Surge. The Grassy Terrain is actually interesting because of the fact that you know it works kind of on both ends. Um, but now I'm thinking, okay, this thing is asleep. I can go for the Fire Blast, but what I'm actually going to end up doing is bring in the Ursa Luna. I figure... I could bring in Ursa Luna, potentially get this thing to Terra, maybe even Calm Mind, and get a little little bear sweep action going. Knowing that I have the Hearth Flame in the back pocket, I still have a pretty good win condition, so... I want to see if I can get the bear to do some stuff. Turns out they're actually going to end up switching themselves, and they decide to bring in the Dragonite, who potentially could have come in and taken a fire attack, likely actually not in the sun, but... Uh, now we find ourselves where Dragonite is in a position where he's locked in a, in a, in a bedroom with a grizzly bear, and... Uh, it is the middle of the day, but I'm still going to throw the moon at his ass. So this thing goes for that uh, outrage. Of course, Blood Moon is bulky as shit, and now I can just throw the moon at this thing's face. And we just melt the tiny wings right off that little fella. So Dragonite is down. 
Um, unfortunately, Ursulina did take too much damage to kind of be too effective at this point, but we he we soak soak a little bit of that sweet sweet grass up and some leftovers. But uh, it's looking like I don't really have a reason to kind of keep this thing alive. I do have the priority in terms of the vacuum wave, so I can try to get a little bit of damage before I go down. As in comes the Galarian Moltres. So this thing comes in here looking majestic as hell, and I'm just gonna end up going for that vacuum wave just as a, a little bit of chip damage before we die. Uh, and a critical hit it doesn't do a whole lot. But this thing finishes me off with that Fiery Wrath. And now it is time to bring in the absolute goat of the Teal Mass DLC. Uh, and that is our, our favorite new girl, the uh, the Ogre Pond. So, like I said, Hearth Flame Ogre Pond is banned. And we're about to see some of the reasons why. Because this thing is absolutely insane. So, we are going to come in here. Um, one of the really cool things, I guess you could call it cool or scary, is that, honestly, Ogre Pond basically gets like a mega form. If you really think about it, this thing kind of just goes full mega. When you go for the Terrastalize, uh, you're actually able to activate an attack boost, plus the increased damage on the fire, plus in the sun. There's literally nothing that wants to deal with this thing. Uh, you pair that with its actually really high speed stat and uh, incre incredibly good typing. It's a very scary Pokemon. So, uh, they decide to switch out Galarian Moltres. In comes Empoleon, who's looking tiny. I didn't realize Empoleon was such a short king. I guess... I guess it makes sense. I don't know. But I'm going to go for that Terra Fire here. Now, with the Terra Fire, not only do we look cool as shit, but now pretty much the carnage begins. We get the big mask on our face. We go full Mega on him. Bring back Megas, please, Game Freak. I get that Embody aspect, like I mentioned, does give you that attack boost. Um, and now nothing <laughs> wants to take. I go for that Ivy Cudgel uh, in the sun with the attack boost, with the boosted stab. And uh, Empoleon is definitely not going to be living that. So absolutely beat the club the living shit out of that penguin with a stick. Uh, and it goes down. So uh, now they have a free switch into whatever they like. It turns out they have one Pokemon that is faster than me, uh, and it's going to be this Hisuian Typhlosion. So um, this thing is relatively scary, but I'm thinking the best thing this can likely do is just go for a Stab Shadow Ball. But at this health, uh, I'm feeling pretty confident that I can actually live that. So I'm just going to go for a knockoff. So it does outspeed, showing that it is going to be Choice Scarf. This Shadow Ball comes. Uh, I use my face as a fucking shield. I'm able to take that nicely, and a knockoff just takes care of of the Hisuian Typhlosion. So down that thing goes. Now they have nothing left that is faster uh, than the Hearth Flame. And we're just seeing this ogre just absolutely tear apart this unsuspecting trainer. So uh, on the free switch, they're going to go into the Galarian Moltres. This thing seems like it would be faster than me and my skinny twig legs over here. But I assure you, it is not. And even at this health, an Ivy Cudgel is going to be way too much. So I just go ahead and give him the old, give him the old hammer. I keep that stick on me, and that is going to definitely kill the Galarian Moltres. Um, and at this point, yeah, th th this mod is is kind of a problem, but it's really fun to use, especially with its uh, fire grass typing. You get Stab Horn Leech, you can just get good recovery with like great damage. It gets access to really cool moves, and honestly, is it's it, it's an issue. Anyway, <laughs> Rillaboom comes in, it is going to make it grassy, except uh, there's not a whole lot of hope for our favorite drum beating gorilla friend here as uh, they do still have a Terra in their back pocket, which they are going to end up going for that Terra, uh, basically just to try to not be super effective to the Ivy Cudgel, but it is going to be Terra normal here, and uh, I don't care how large of a diamond you have on your head, you are still about to get bonked by my good friend Ogre Pond here. So I do, uh, it does actually wake up, it's going to be able to go for the glassy, Grassy Glide. Uh, I'm able to live it with 8 HP because Ogre Pond is the GOAT, and Ivy Cudgel is going to be able to finish this thing off. So uh, being able to live that, that Grassy Glide was pretty amazing too. And down goes the rest of the team. So the late game Ogre Pond is a force to be reckoned with. And this Pokemon is gone from OU. What do you guys think about the ban? Do you think it was worthy? I honestly think this Pokemon, it, it probably should have been banned. I would have liked to see more of a suspect. This thing was kind of quick banned. But uh, overall, interesting Pokemon and uh, had a fun time. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you next time. Peace out.